once said, if you want something new, you have to stop doing something old. Hello everyone and welcome to Nerdy Optometrist, a podcast channel for all things optometry. And this is your host, Ukti Bora. Today we have a special episode focusing on an upcoming event, which we are all excited about. We are going to do a special segment, which is going to talk about the upcoming conference of the second IVI International Conference, focusing on eye health in the changing world. And to give us a little more glimpse about this amazing event, I have none other but the CEO of IVI, Mr. Vinod Daniel. Mr. Vinod Daniel needs no introduction, but just to kind of give you a quick brief about him, he's the CEO of IVI which is a non-profit organization working to provide access to primary eye care and free glasses for children and adults in the underprivileged community across India. His work with India Vision Institute in vision screening and optometry development is making an impact in a largely underserved sector of primary health care in the country. Thank you so much, Mr. Vinod Daniel, to kind of join in uh, for this video and this podcast. I know you, you have like, immense busy schedule but i really appreciate you sharing some time and a warm welcome thank thank you so much um, uh, Lukti, and and thank you nerdy optometrist for this opportunity uh, and i'm delighted to be part of this awesome and this is the second time we have collaborated and you know i'm working closely with this upcoming international conference and i am really excited to know more i was part of the first one and this is the second one we are again going virtual things are still ha- the same nothing much has changed there is words about you know the whole covid situation getting worse with the delta virus but just to focus on the virtual conference what should people expect in this second uh conference that's coming up yeah see i mean i think first of all as you as you said i mean uh, uh, the pandemic has kind of made a lot more things go online yes including um, our annual conference, which we started actually online last year. Mm-hmm. It, it was um, very um, uh, productive, successful. The feedback we've got you know, has been phenomenal. We had close to 1,500 delegates who participated from around the world, uh, but predominantly from uh, the Africa, Asia Pacific region. We had a very mm-hmm. strong representation from India. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, there has been quite a bit of interest for um, this kind of an international gathering to happen um, you know, every year. And, mm-hmm. and hence, we are doing the second uh, international optometry conference, Eye Health in a Changing World. Uh, it's from the 9th to the 11th of September this year. Uh, mm-hmm. Please do register, um, benefit, uh, participate, network. And, and the technical sessions, you know, are going to be phenomenal. Our focus this year would be, um, I mean, among other things, would include myopia, would mm-hmm. include the role and influence of big data and arti- artificial intelligence in eye care, mm-hmm. uh, the human resource challenges, uh, you know, that this sector faces, not just um, in India, but, um, but many other developing countries. And of course, right. I mean, it's been great that the Allied Health Bill has been passed here, but the kind of legislative frameworks and associated issues that one needs to do to progress the sector all these would be focus areas wonderful and I'm, I'm really excited about it to be honest because i was part of the first virtual conference as a media partner as an attendee and have seen one thing which i have to highlight and uh, people who who haven't registered yet or were not part of the first conference i have to say if you're hesitant don't be uh, just do login and register because the platform that has been created for this conference is very, very user friendly. And that is what I have to kind of applaud the entire team for, you know, coming up with this uh, very user user friendly portal, which also gives you like access to chat, to network, as you rightly mentioned, while you're attending, you know, parallel uh, events and the sessions. So I think that is something which is phenomenal. Though we would all love to be physically present, meet each other and, you know, enjoy the conference pre like the pre-COVID era. But given the circumstances, I think uh, IVI has the best portal that, and the experience that I've attended so far. So please do register for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ukti, uh, for those kind words. Yeah. And talking about the major highlights, right, you did mention myopia, AI, big data, technology. I mean, those things are definitely the highlight. 
but is there something which also focuses on the ce credits are there any ce credited courses and like uh, sessions that people can attend and that will help them for their oci credits and stuff yeah look i mean um the um uh, you know based on you know what i just mentioned about uh, being keynote uh, topics we do have a very impressive uh, list of keynote speakers who have agreed this includes uh, professor matthew burton from the london school of hygiene and tropical medicine dr anthony das from lb prasad amanda davis from fredolos professor kovin naidu from eslor international we also have professor ian bailey from berkeley dr mm -hmm. kate gifford who everyone knows um mr bayani abesmes who's a barrister and he was quite instrumental in developing the the legal structure within philippines ob malopi from africa yeah. dr Bab babar kureshi from from cbm now we also have a whole range of other pre conference workshops that mm -hmm. that that are being done including you know working with iacl on contact lens management mm -hmm. uh, working with elvi prasad on rehabilitation issues Uh, we are working with uh, uh, bpoc on uh, masterclass optometry on a session right. we also have targeted sessions you know that deal with myopia in africa mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, a, a session with asco on uh, on on sporting um, and and contact lenses so uh, there's a whole range of things and we we are extremely thankful that oci you know will uh, offer credits so currently okay. we are just discussing on the number of credits that that they would offer Mm -hmm. so you know overall i think it it's it's going to be where people you know especially within india they can benefit with those oci credits people globally can benefit with the rich contents that are going to be part absolutely. of the content. so absolutely absolutely and i think how you mentioned and what you said was the the best thing which i love about these virtual conferences is you are able to connect and listen to all international speakers from the comfort of the home yeah. you are not hard traveling you can kind of listen to these sessions even at your convenience in case if you missed one or two of them yeah. there is an access without really uh, any travel cost any accommodation cost otherwise you know all these things are going to kind of play when you want to attend say one or two conferences in a year and the other thing is like you know the the global footprint which we everyone is talking about the carbon footprint where you have so much that goes into traveling and going to one location to attend a conference so this definitely feels like the best of the best in terms of the situation right. and the speakers and the uh, the range of speakers that you have on your panel so absolutely uh, looking forward to it now talking about you know you mentioned that the conference did get an overwhelming response last year and i also saw a post about the abstracts and things that were open where you again got an amazing overwhelming response there as well so do you feel this is becoming the future and this is how it's going to stay forever or is going to be more of a hybrid version coming forward look i mean our, our role is to provide the platform to be a catalyst to be a nurturer for this sector Uh, in in especially the developing part of the world um, and especially india right. so we are, we're delighted with the, the number of abstracts so there is uh, other than the keynotes mm -hmm. um, we do have uh, you know certain um, uh, time slots where invited papers are given and mm -hmm. just because we had this large number of abstracts which i think would would uh, be Um, you know, we had about two hundred and fifty abstracts. We can't yeah. take more than eighty to one hundred, so the rest would come. You know, some of them might come as posters after that. So the contents are going to be quite rich, both from the keynote aspect as mm -hmm. well as from uh, the the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the abstract uh, papers that would be presented. So okay. you know, def de definitely. And in terms of registrations, see, I mean, we are already you know over and over nine hundred now. so i do expect that the registrations would be pretty similar or even more than last year right so good and and it's 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 got a very rich group of people who will be attending so networking with them i think you know would be would be a good opportunity for everyone you know who wants to be part of it now Absolutely. coming back to your your previous comment i think you know going forward look i'm i'm a firm believer in meeting people you know face to face <laughs> and and i think you know the, the time at this i mean uh, today's um, uh, you know uh, time and and the pandemic and and what it's created makes it i guess for the conference to be fully 
um, virtual. Right. But I think there'll be a time where it's going to be a mix of virtual and physical. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said before, not everybody can travel, but making it both virtual and physical, um, I think it's going to be a very strong possibility going forward. So every conference, I think, mm -hmm. would, would probably be bigger than what any other conference has been because, see, right now being virtual is an accepted mechanism and people right. still crave for that physical you know, Absolutely. I mean, you know, to get to know each other, I think sometimes it's good to meet people in flesh. So. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have to say that, you know, I have seen at least in West uh, that there, there is another international conference called Vision Expo East, Vision Expo West, which is very, very famous, especially in the United States. Uh, they last uh, this year, the Vision Expo East did have a hybrid version. They did have a physical component as well as a virtual component. So I am expecting the same or similar thing to happen around the world as well as we grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that also makes it possible for people who, due to a variety of reasons, can't travel for them to benefit. Right. People who probably can travel, you know, they would benefit also. So I think it's, it's a win-win. Absolutely. And do you feel, uh, I just wanted to confirm one other thing, all these sessions that are being uh, conducted, they will be recorded and uh, people will have access even at a later stage if they are not able to. Usually the, for the people who register, mm -hmm. uh, the platform would have those contents for a few days after that. So the people who probably can't really access it, you know, at that particular time slot, they mm -hmm. probably can access, but then the platform would get closed. Got it. Yeah. There's, there's a few, you know, keynotes, especially we do have certain conference talks that would be available online, you know, long term. Mm -hmm. But most others, I think, are meant for the conference. Right. You have an abstract booklet and you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's all available to anyone who registers. Got it. So do register and get access to all the all the content that we're going to be out there. Uh, that's I think that's the bottom line. And make sure that you attend on the day of. So you don't miss out on anything uh, interesting. Now you did your first conference. You're now at the second conference. Things are definitely more streamlined. Uh, you've learned from the first experience and you know getting better. Are there major roadblocks or any hurdles during this journey? Look, I mean, I think the first conference um, was um, was the first time I think uh, anyone really tried something big. I would say, you know, within India, we were probably one of the first groups to really try, uh, at least within this sector and even globally. So a lot of people have commented and come back and, and, and you know, we, we're going to be hosting a whole range of other conferences for other groups also because of, of the kind of, uh, you know, expertise we've gained and, and, and the way the first conference went. Right. The, the, the thing is, the, the trade fair element was, was something that, that, you know, we realized it's not that easy for us to have unless we are very innovative. So for this conference, we are not going to have a trade fair. Okay. We, we would probably have uh, a few uh, locations where people who are very involved with us are, uh, you know, we are so thankful to uh, SLR Luxottica for being the, the, the big sponsor. They're sponsoring the whole conference and, right. and Bosch and Lama supporting in some ways. So groups like that. And, and mm -hmm. there's a bunch of others who are also helping us, um, you know, in, in other ways. So for them to you know, showcase what they have, you know, oh, otherwise, right. I think, you know, that, that, that's probably the only change. In mm -hmm. terms of contents, uh, I think this conference will be much, much richer. So we just build on it and people mm -hmm. are getting to know us. Even the number right. of tracks have been much more. The, the keynote papers, you know, are, are more. Uh, we did have certain panel discussion slots. So you know, in this, in, in the plenary session. So we've actually converted that into more keynote sessions, uh, keynote, uh, you know, paper slots. So that, I, that was the kind of feedback we had. Right. You know, people to, to, to benefit. Uh, so I think this one's going to be richer, but that's, that's how life is, I guess. You kind of learn, you build on it, you get better and better. Hopefully Absolutely. Now, by the time we do the 10th conference, you know, it will be the perfect conference and everything. So. Well, well, I felt, I felt it was great experience even in the first one. Uh, but as you rightly mentioned, like, you know, things change that uh, the trade fair has changed. That's not going to be part. They're just few companies. So, yes, I think by the time we have the 10th conference, which I am hoping would be more of a hybrid version, plus we'll be able to nail the, the small bits and pieces in which, you know, everyone can be part of it and can enjoy the experience. So 
like because i live in united states so for me i really can't travel to the conference in india but i would love to attend and you know be part of it so i think for me i'm super excited if world moves virtual so i can attend more conferences versus <laughs> just hear things or not be able to attend them so yeah absolutely i'm looking forward to that change yeah well, thank you yeah. awesome so i think we have covered quite a bit about you know what to expect you know what are the area of focus is why someone should register and i i feel after listening to this episode there is no doubt or question for anyone and if they're still debating i think they should register today i'll be adding the information of you know how to register like the link in the description so whoever wants to uh, register please do click on that link another thing which i had to mention was nerdy optometrist is a media partner so i do have a special code for your discount so do use nerdy25 to get a discount for the registration as well so i'll be adding all that in, all that information in the description so do do go ahead and register uh before i end this episode any take away message that you have for all the listeners and potential de- delegates for the conference the coming i i think um overall you know in in, in other, the technical bits are very important mm-hmm. i think a platform like this provides you know great um uh, content in terms of the technical aspect so i think you know uh, everyone should benefit right but don't miss out on the networking uh, aspect because i think it's important it's important that you build relationships with with others who are attending it doesn't matter which part of the world so use the platform to to network and mm-hmm. even if you can probably gain five or six you know good connections in the line of work that you are in i mm-hmm. think it's great i mean that's a huge success don't miss out on that Absolutely. so 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 make sure and i i know that my my messages don't be shy to reach out because mm-hmm. i think everybody who would be part of uh, the the conference is keen to meet other people from you know other parts of the world other states you know in 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 terms of you know how they could learn collaborate work with each other so make Absolutely. sure you know you 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 benefit in a physical conference we do that physically maybe they have you know morning afternoon tea receptions and all that this one i think you just need to take the opportunity and just go to you know the, the the networking platform and 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 talk to each other absolutely and i have to say this talking about networking it helped me uh, as an as a podcast host and i was able to connect with people from around the world uh, to mention a few i was able to connect with people from iapb and we mm-hmm. did a couple of episodes so do do connect with everyone i will be there part of the net uh, uh event as well so do reach out to me as well if you want to kind of talk and chat and for people sometimes you know if you are physically there you might feel shy to kind of go and approach but this gives a little more uh support because you are not physically facing them you just have to message them and then they'll respond back and you can talk but this uh, i feel it has worked really well i was able to kind of connect with two or three like major uh, organizations because of this conference so i highly recommend anyone and everyone to use use the networking thing don't think that oh just because it's virtual i don't need to talk to people you definitely can connect and speak to people for sure all right so with that thank you so much mr uh, daniel for your time and giving us the glimpse of what to expect I'm excited and I'm sure uh, people who already registered are looking forward to it and for those in doubt will register it today. So thank you once again for your time and really appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, Utti and thank you Nerdy Optometrist for being a media partner for supporting us uh, in this conference and look forward to working uh, you know more closely together in future and I look forward to to you know interacting with many of your uh, viewers Uh, you know during the conference and post that thank you thank you so much thank you.